Hello, my name is Amulia Bhaskara and I'm an undergrad at Dr. Ben Kolber's Pain Stress Lab. And today I'm going to talk to you about my project regarding the evaluation of retrograde projections from the parabrachial nucleus to the central amygdala. So for some background into the topic, like I mentioned, our lab looks at pain, and in specific, the area of the brain that we focus on is the central nucleus of the amygdala, or the CEA, which plays a role in both emotional or affective pain, such as stress, along with physical pain. Now, the CEA, in order to do this, receives projections from many different areas of the brain. One of those areas is the parabrachial nucleus, or the PBN, which sends a lot of sensory information to all different parts of the brain. By understanding, by using tracing, we can figure out the way that the CEA and the PBN project to one another or communicate with one another. And using this as a guide, we can then understand how the CEA coordinates with other areas of the brain. The other areas that we're specifically interested in are the zona inserta or the ZI, which is important in the creation of fear memories, the substantia inamata or SI, whose function is largely unknown, and the bed nucleus of the striate terminalis or BNST, which is considered an extended central amygdala. So our objective, like I mentioned, is tracking the neural projections from these four areas of the brain to the CEA and back for the purpose of mapping cortical pathways. Although we have carried out this experiment with all four areas, the area that I'm gonna be talking about specifically today is the PBN. Our hypothesis was that we would see both retrograde and air interrograde projections from the CEA to the PBN. So the way that we did this is that we injected a retrograde virus into the right PBN of a wild type mouse. A retrograde virus tracks the movement of electrical stimuli in a neuron from the axon to the neuronal cell body. In other words, it works backwards. And so using this method, we can figure out what areas of the brain projected to the PBN. Now, the virus that we used resulted in the infected cell producing GFP or green fluorescent protein that after we sacrificed our animal, we we're able to stain for using an immunohistocompatibility assay or IHC, which uses antibodies that bind to these infected cells and enhances that fluorescence to allow us to see it under a microscope. So what did we see? The first image here shows the targeting of the PBN. And in the 4X image, we can see that there is a great deal of luminescence in the PBN, indicating their injection was in the right area and was the right concentration. On the far left, far right, my specific, you can see the movement of the virus from the PBN as well as towards the PBN. When it moves towards the PBN, that is a retrograde movement. In other words, we will see cell bodies in the areas that project to the PBN. When it moves away from it, we'll see cell bodies in the PBN and axon tracks in the area that has been projected to. In other words, the areas that were projected to were the CEA and the areas we see projections from were the BNST, the ZI, and the trigeminal ganglion, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So like I mentioned, we identified anterograde projections, which are away from the PBN in the CEA. And these are indicated by the axon tracks we see in this 20X image. What's interesting here is that we should see both anterograde and retrograde projections in the CEA, but we only see anterograde, which brings up some interesting questions as to why this has occurred. In terms of retrograde projections, like I mentioned, we saw it in the BNST, the ZI, and the trigeminal ganglion. And we noticed the common factor between all of these images is that there's a big clump of cell bodies located in each of these areas, indicating that they received the virus due to the fact that they projected to the PBN. The trigeminal ganglion in specific sends sensory information to the PBN. So it makes sense that we see staining here, although we did not ex expect it. So what's our take home message here? What's our conclusion? Well, we concluded that there was definitely a strong pathway between the PBN and the CEA, despite the fact that we did not see those retrograde projections. We also saw evidence for pathways in this area between the ZI and the BNST and the PBN. And that should, gives us some support that our animals that we have injected later on should produce these same results. Our next steps are to continue IHC on these other three samples and further experiment to flesh out these pathways better, because by doing this, we can get more information how, about how drugs targeting the CEA will move throughout the brain. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation, and I hope you've enjoyed it.